Okay, good morning, Peter. CBLT update. You are in numerous different directions, but it's my understanding that the number one priority of CBLT is actually being a deal maker. Is that correct? That is correct. And in this deal maker, I see that you are involved in a minimum of one dozen projects, at least eight physical projects for exploration, and then five other types of deal deals. Is that correct, or are there more coming? Well, there's always more coming. That's the great hope of the industry. Um, here, here's the thing we take a lot of pride in, and it's an answer to your question. The company has been around 14 years. It has roughly 75 million shares out. It has never done a consolidation. We've been able to finance the hard dollar operations of the company through successful M&A, through optioning, through joint venturing. So we paid the bills for the company through M&A, not having to dilute the company. We raise money by flow through to work on the properties in Canada. And we're proud of the fact we've never had to do a rollback. So for people who want to get regular updates, because I know you have a lot, a huge network of individuals that know you in the industry and, and actually know you as a compliance expert as well. Can you tell me how you keep members updated regularly? Phone call, email, uh, Twitter is our, our general platform. I don't know how much use LinkedIn is. I know some people use it extremely well. We just have never had that traction with our shareholder base. And of course, the website, which some local genius recently redesigned for us, and it looks wonderful. So, so the website address has changed. It's cblt.tv, no longer cbltinc.com. So in addition to that, so your company, if I recall properly, is very focused on taking all of your years of experience in really debating acquisitions of deals and getting them to the next level. Did I read and understand that correctly? Right. Uh, you and I had this conversation earlier about, I don't think we're a project generator. I, I don't like that term. It, to me, it's always had something unsavory about it. Our team likes to find assets that we think are undervalued for one reason or another, whether it's political, uh, geologic, there's something there, it's fallen out of favor. Buy that asset, either sit on it till it's back in favor or do work on it to clean it up and put it back into favor then sell it out to another group with a capacity to move it from where our skill set is to get it to here. Another group has the skill set to get it much, much further. And we're happy to sell it, option it, joint venture it to a group who can move it further than we can. So having just hosted you on an investor talk, uh, one of the actual investors that was in the audience was asking me about your involvement in Falcon Gold. Can we start there and give us an update, please? Sure. Falcon Gold is a deposit that was owned by Falcon Bridge, hence Falcon Gold, and then by Kinross. It's a former producer. Because it's on patented lands, the production records are spotty. Even the district geologist's information is spotty, although, you know, the district geologist's office in Ontario is one of the best ways your tax dollars get spent. They were able to find a mine plant from 1936 for us, which is, I find that fascinating. The... There is a historical resource estimate on this property, pre-43-101, so all the usual caveats and warnings apply. Um, in the wall of the shaft and from the dumps, samples were taken, and they ranged from between the mid-30s of gold per gram up to 58 grams of gold per ton. Consider you have mines in Canada running around one gram per gold of gold per ton, it's shocking to find values that high. In 1992, a Falcon Bridge geologist said there were three properties side by side. No, no one should do any work at the north end of these projects until one person owns all three of them because the Garson Fault runs through all three and unites them. And about three months ago, we were able to buy the last project, Unite Title, which greatly increases the value of the three projects. And now we'll be doing some work in there. When I was reviewing your information, Peter, I counted eight projects that you currently hold positions. And I, I've counted other deals, like over a dozen deals that you're involved with. Right. But of the eight projects, can you tell me, can you list a couple of these that are your favorite and tell us why 
they are such extraordinary investment deals from you. It's like asking to name which is your favorite child. You'll love them all. Um, we've acquired these for specific reasons. Um, back in 2013, we acquired one in North BC for a specific reason. The owner next door came to us and said, we want that project, but not now. I said, okay. So that neighbor has been paying all of our annual dues and we gave them a rofer. Our cost on that was around $10,000 all in. And we just sold it for $180,000 cash. Small win, but I'd rather have small wins than small losses. And that put a further $180,000 cash in the bank. That's hard dollars. Uh, the CFO and I could run a public company on 180 grand for a year quite easily. You know, we do most of the legals in-house. We do the filings in-house. Our outside costs are minimal apart from the ones like transfer agent and stock exchange. So the company's in good standing now to be run on the hard dollars for some time. The projects that we have that we like, we like each of them for a different reason. We like the Cobalt property in Quebec because we've optioned it off to a group that has great financial strength. And we're fairly sure that they're going to be able to develop that and acquire further assets and help that company grow. As it grows, we still own a quarter million shares in that. Plus our shareholders were granted a dividend in those shares. So every single one of our shareholders owns Powerstone shares as well. And they will see a direct exposure to that project. So I like that a lot. I like the uh, Big Duck Lake project in Hemlo West. It, um, according to the geologists, very, very favorable. I'm not a geologist. I just listen to the smarter people and take their information. Um, there's high grade zinc at the north end, high grade copper at the bottom and a gold deposit historical pre-43-101 of 59,000 ounces of around 11 grams of gold per ton. It's a pretty significant small deposit. Our plan there would be to prove up that deposit. There's about 10,000 meters of drilling that have never been incorporated to update that estimate and put it good with 43-101 and to investigate the high-grade belt across the north end. I like that project. It has some real upside potential to it. Uh, we're in the Bird River, Man Bird River Pegmatite field in Manitoba. There's the Tanko mine, which is Canada's only currently producing lithium mine that no one's ever heard of because indirectly it's owned by the Chinese government and all the lithium just disappears. We're next door to that, about three kilometers away. We've done some rounds of exploration. We're happy with the results and we'll keep going. It's an exciting project. You know, it's exciting when I get notes from the field geologist who lives in Winnipeg saying, when are we back in the field? Here's my plan. This is what I want to do. Can't wait for winter to be over. If the field geo is excited to get back in, I'm going to be excited to get back in. I could go on and on about every one of the pro projects and the reason why we love them. But every project has a specific reason why our management team likes them. It's not just because they're ours. We bought them for a specific reason. And we will see those reasons through to fruition. Well, Peter, thank you so much for the update. And for everybody interested in trying to keep up with what is a lot of activity for CBLT, please go to cblt.tv. Peter, thank you. Thank you for your time and help.